So, I said I'd keep an ear to the ground for any more news concerning the Time Lord Victorious tales that will be coming out over the next two years, and a little more news dropped towards the multi-platform project. I've already gone over what little we know of the event, as well as my own speculations as to the overall storyline, in a prior video, so I won't repeat it all here. Suffice to say that the individual stories that are going to be released are effectively standalone stories with a connecting overall plotline centred around the Dark Times at the beginnings of the universe. The first parts of this narrative are going to be two books coming out in October, so you know, a little time away. They're being published by Ebury House, which is a division of Penguin, one of the contributors first announced for this crossover event. I will be reading the plot synopsis, so if you want to avoid all spoilers, I'm letting you know now, but this is effectively public information now. The first of these two novels is The Night, the Fool and the Dead, written by Steve Cole. This fella's known for being a children's book author and has also written for Doctor Who books before. So let's take a look at the cover and the synopsis that's been made available. First up, it's a Tenth Doctor story, seemingly companionless, suggesting that this takes place somewhere between the planets of the dead and the end of time. The primarily unaccounted time where the Tenth Doctor denied the summons of the Ood and effectively procrastinated before initiating the chain of events that would culminate in his regeneration. That being said, we have an Ood on the front cover. As with the original promotional image, we can't discern who this is, but it might be Sigma. Either way, towards the end of his life, Ten was haunted by visions of the Ood. However, this one is dressed in a rather snappy dinner jacket, with white gloves giving him a butler's appearance, appropriate for a serving Ood, although if he's travelling with the Doctor, I doubt it would be doing much serving. So, during the Dark Times, death was a seldom experienced concept in the universe, with many beings simply being immortal. Immortal, not invincible to point. They still can be killed. However, then came the Kotura. These beings began dispensing mortality and allocating entire species' lifespans. Naturally, this new state of existence freaks out many of the inhabitants, which I bet included the Eternals, and many begin to try to cheat death. There's two more things that I want to focus on here, it's the Shade-like entity and the Citadel in the background. The plot mentions that the Kotara are the grim new spectres of death, and I think this matches up quite nicely with that descriptor. The other thing is this Citadel structure, and while the planet is barren like Gallifrey, I'm not sold on the idea that this is the Doctor's home world. The big point that the synopsis reveals is that the Doctor has gone back with an aim to stop the Kotura, preventing them from bestowing mortality on the species of the universe. Well that's very Time Lord Victorious, Ten is going to extreme lengths to avoid dying, literally going back to when the universe's laws were being formed and trying to mess with the unfolding nature of reality. It remains to be seen if the Kotura are alien invaders or something else, but I wouldn't mind betting that they're a manifestation of death, entropy or something, just as the Guardians embody the forces of order and chaos and a kind of fundamental entities to the fabric of the universe. Meddling with these forces made manifest would have reality shattering results. Either way, this feels very much like something the Time Lord Victorious might try to do, and I always thought it strange that he defiantly declares no to Ood Sigma, and then next time we see him he has accepted his fate and making light of the situation. So perhaps this is going to be Ten at his most unhinged, perturbed and vulnerable. On to the next entry now, All Flesh is Grass, written by Una McCormack, who actually wrote the Picard prequel book The Last Best Hope. That was quite a faithful depiction of Picard and, in my opinion, an essential foundation for the series that explains much of Starfleet's actions, but I digress. The title, All Flesh is Grass, is a reference to a biblical passage that is taken to mean that life is limited, and that is what makes it precious. The synopsis and cover point out that this is another Ten-centric story, but Eight and Nine turn up too. 
What's more, the Doctor is now in full Rassilon themed presidential robes, and this is being released in December so it takes place after the first book. On the appearance of the other Doctors, the synopsis sheds some light, saying that as Ten combats the Kotura, he has to confront the fractured realities of his past selves. It also alludes that Ten has almost succeeded in his plan, however something has backfired and the universe is unravelling with death everywhere, so who'd have thought the Doctor overreached again? It mentions that the other Doctors may have been warped by this new timeline, and one commands a ship of the undead, while the other has allied with the Doctor's greatest nemesis. Who could that be? Who could it be? Well, the Cybermen were called the Silver Nemesis, so it's obviously them. Oh, right, the Dalek wreckage everywhere. I suppose it might be the Daleks. This angle might provide a new look on the whole Dark Doctor thing, where we get to see the Time Lord Victorious' actions even alter his past incarnations' timelines. So I wonder, who is meant to be the hero here? Are 8 and 9 trying to return death to the universe by siding with Daleks and commanding the undead, while the victorious Doctor tries to stop them from foiling his plans? Or has Ten realised his colossal cock-up, and these older incarnations are evil byproducts of his selfish desire to overthrow death? So, as for the Kotura, I couldn't find any mention of them in canon. Maybe beings like them? But as far as I can tell, they are new to the expanded lore. What I'm looking forward to most is seeing how the universe is changed by the removal of this mortality, and why people are still dying without the Kotura's intervention. So it seems most of our collective predictions were right on the money with the bet that these stories would be focused on Ten losing his way, and now I'm thinking that these other stories and experiences will be centred around this new shattered universe that has been created. Ultimately this means that when things are resolved we might end up with a and it never happened resolution, but still it could be a fun ride. The idea that there was a concept of mortality being introduced by an actual species that judged all others is a strange one, but no weirder than other concepts that are present in the eldritch times of the universe's formation. I expect the overall themes of this series to be about the importance of mortality and how cheating death too far is going to be a bad idea. I also like a potential twist where perhaps the Eternals end up being the only race left unjudged by this Kotura, making these tales a sort of paradoxical origin for them. Anyway, I think I'm a little late to the party again with these developments. I started this a few days ago, but this is the sort of topic that better serves the shorter Sunday videos. I hope I've still provided some insight for those who are interested in some epic who based in the mythological origin times of the universe. Thanks for watching this update and breakdown. And I'll see you next time for the next science fiction one, but let me know if this series is something you'd follow or want me to cover when it's out, and until then, thanks again, I've been Rick, goodbye.